Members' committee has resumed. Prior to the dinner break, uh, we were debating the consumer's right to know country of food, country of origin of food bill. Um, and Dr. Deborah Russell had the call and has four minutes and 33 seconds remaining. Should she wish to take it? Thank you, Madam Chair. I wish to take every second available to me. Uh, Madam Chair, before the dinner break, I was reflecting on the different places in my electorate of New Lynn where you could buy food, where people could buy food. <laughs> and in fact, yeah, there's the obvious, perhaps I was hungry. The obvious places are the supermarkets, um, there's several fine supermarkets in the electorate. Um, but then I, I was thinking about uh, the Titirangi markets, the Sunday markets that run in Titirangi once a month, and uh, the Avondale markets, which run every Sunday. Now, the, the Titirangi markets uh, uh, really don't have fruit and veg there, but they do have cheese, um, locally produced cheese, and it's, it's a craft market and uh, a farmer's market. So, uh, as is the usual thing with the uh, farmer's market rules or a craft market rules in this particular market, the person who makes the product or the person who's selling the product must be there. Uh, it must be the person who actually made it in the first place. So there's not too much of a worry about where the food that's sold at the Titirangi market comes from. It's fairly clearly made in New Zealand. Uh, but the Avondale markets are a different matter. Uh, they run at the race course on Sundays, uh, and they're huge. Uh, probably, possibly not as huge as some of the markets out in South Auckland, but they are, they are huge. Um, there are many, many vendors there, and lots and lots of fruit and veg vendors. Uh, and often um, pretty hard-working immigrant families who come in and grow food and sell it. And at that market, uh, I think you would be, people would be safe in assuming that the food had come from New Zealand, perhaps, but I'm not entirely sure about that. For example, from time to time, uh, there are pineapples for sale there. Now, now, to my knowledge, we don't grow pineapples in New Zealand. Uh, so I was thinking about the labelling requirements for this is what is essentially a grower's market or perhaps the, the vendors at the market, they go and buy stuff from wholesalers and then they sell it the next day. They're often on selling slightly uh, less fresh food. Um, often it's grown in their own market gardens and it's kind of the excess, the stuff that couldn't be sold to supermarkets because it's not good enough, but it's, it's perfectly good food. Uh, so I'm wondering about the labelling requirements at the Avondale market as opposed to a supermarket. I, I see there is a clause uh, that food can be excluded from being a regulated food if requiring the food to comply with the standard would be unduly onerous or wouldn't help consumers to make informed decisions about purchasing the food. That's in clause uh, five, uh, four, subclause four. So that's interesting there, but this is not really to do with the food itself. It's to do with where it's being sold and uh, the type of market it's being sold at. And to my mind, it's not going to be quite as easy for the vendors, for the sellers at the Avondale markets, to, to label the food, to be able to display where it has come from, uh, in quite the same way that it would be, I think, comparatively easy for the vendor at a supermarket to be able to label the fresh fruit and veg that's being sold there. Um, and, of course, in the Titirangi markets, uh, given the nature of the farmer's market, that makes a difference. Now, look, I see um, in some of the discussion around this bill that uh, there was some consideration given to uh, roadside vendors, you know, people who uh, have a stall on the side of the road, you know, lemons for sale, um, with an honesty box perhaps, free-range eggs for sale, those sorts of things which are just there. And, of course, as you're driving by and you stop at one of these roadside stalls uh, <laughs> uh, to buy, um, or perhaps cycling, uh, walking, um, scootering by, whatever happens to be the way that you're choosing to transport yourself. Uh, that's quite easy to make the assumption that that is where, in fact, the food was produced. Uh, but somehow the disconnection, the possible disconnection between the food produced on farmland but sold at the Avondale markets, that's exercising my mind. And I'm, I'm rather hoping that um, 
I can get some clarification, perhaps some report back from what the committee discussed on this point, because I'm sure the committee would have discussed it. It's, it's quite an interesting point around food production and sale. Um, and what resolution they came to with it. Uh, that would help me to understand, in particular, how it's going to affect people in my electorate who sell food. It's something I very much want to know about. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. I call Kitty Tapuellen. Uh, Madam Chair, I appreciate uh, uh, being